stagflation. Everybody's talking about it, but what is it? Why do we get it? And is it here yet or is it coming to America? I'm Dr. Bill Connerly. I connect the dots between the economy and business. And I'll talk about stagflation because everybody else is talking about it. It's a portmanteau word, meaning it's made up of stagnation and inflation. There are times when we think, well, we can have stagnation or we can have inflation. It's one or the other, but both at the same time. That's frustrating. The reason we get it is time lags in monetary policy. So let's talk about that. The Federal Reserve, I'm recording this in June of 2022, the Federal Reserve has started tightening. They pushed short-term interest rates up about a percentage point and a half, and they have communicated that they're going to do more, raise interest rates, and do some quantitative tightening. But we don't see an immediate effect on anything. I mean, the day after the Federal Reserve made its decision, there was not much difference in the world unless you were trading securities in the short-term market. The change on employment, the change on inflation will take some time. What will happen is that people will see higher interest rates and they'll slow down purchases of cars, new houses. Businesses will slow down uh, purchases of capital equipment and maybe hold less inventory. So sales will go down, but that's not the same thing as inflation going down. But after sales go down, businesses slow down their hiring, maybe do a hiring freeze, cut people's hours, and eventually maybe do some layoffs. So that's the effect of monetary policy on employment. And let's take a look at what that looks like. This chart shows how much of the effect comes at different times. Uh, the line goes above zero, uh, but that does not mean that employment's going up. Uh, this chart can be used for the Federal Reserve trying to stimulate the economy and get things going, or the Federal Reserve tightening and trying to slow things down. How much of the impact comes at different times? And you can see that the maximum impact of monetary policy on employment happens at about a year, maybe a year and a few months that we get the maximum. But if you go six months in, you're getting some effect, though not all of it. The time lag for monetary policy to affect inflation is longer, is longer. Let's talk about that for a little bit before we go into the details. So businesses first respond, they see slower sales, they slow down their hiring, cut people's hours, eventually start layoffs. Usually they are slow to change prices. In commodities markets where there's a daily auction, yeah, copper prices change, oil prices change. But for everyday goods and services, not much happens at first. But after we have had some months of slowing business sales, a few companies say, oh, let's cut prices to get some market share, take it away from that other guy. And then we start to have an effect on inflation. So you can see that the maximum effect of monetary policy on inflation happens after about two years, plus or minus a little bit. And at first, not much happens. In fact, at first, we have a perverse direction. And what's going on there is that inflation, when the Fed is trying to bring inflation down, they actually push it up. Higher interest rates increase company costs, and some companies will push prices up to keep their profit margin going. That eventually is reversed. Tighter monetary policy does eventually slow down inflation, but not in the first six months. And a year in, not much has happened. Let's put both of those charts on the same page. And you can see that there's a very pronounced difference. They both have the same shape, but employment changes a lot faster than inflation. So in the first six months, uh, no improvement on inflation, but we're starting to see a weaker job market. Another six months go by and we're seeing a lot of in impact on employment, not very much impact on inflation yet. Well, we're going to get there and eventually there will be a slowdown of inflation by the tighter monetary policy, but it doesn't happen right away. And that gap, that gap between the two lines is a representation of stagflation. So I know what you want, I know you're saying, Bill, don't you have a forecast? Is your crystal ball not working? I do. 
but it's going to be a little bit of a soft forecast. Remember a couple of things. These time lags, first of all, are estimates and every business cycle can be a little bit different. The time lags are estimated over historical data and maybe things have changed in the uh, economy so that the time lags would be, could be shorter, could be longer. There's an argument that they're a little shorter now than they used to be. So we cannot take these as precise. And also the Federal Reserve is tightening gradually. So in March, they raised short-term interest rates up a quarter of a point. And then early May, a half a point. And then mid-June, three quarters of a point. So this is not a sudden change. This is a gradual change. And that kind of says everything is going to take longer. But they did something that may shorten it up. They started talking about tightening long before they did it. Long-term interest rates, like mortgage rates, changed just because market professionals were saying, oh, the Fed is going to tighten. We should make an adjustment right now. So is it going to be faster or slower? I think probably about average, but that's just kind of a wild estimate. So that means that six months from, the, from now, uh, end of 2022, we will be seeing a slower growth of jobs. I don't think we'll see a decline in total employment at that time, but we will definitely be seeing weaker employment market, but no improvement on inflation. We'll call that stagflation, and that will continue through the first half of 2023. Employment continuing to have an, uh, an, uh, to be impacted, but not much change in terms of inflation. Then in the second half of 2023, inflation starts coming down, and whew, we may not call it stagflation anymore with inflation coming down, but we'll have the stagnation side definitely slower growth of jobs and perhaps more layoffs and a decline in employment, rising unemployment rate. Well, this may make you wonder, are we going to have a recession out of this? And usually when people say, Bill, are we going to have a recession? I say yes. And then I try to change the subject before they can ask me when. Well, I think that Right now, the risk is pretty low. Like I say, middle of 2022, risk is very low. The second half of 2023, the risk rises significantly. Early 2024, yeah, a lot of risk of a recession at that time. I'm not saying it's 100% certain. I would say more likely than not. Soft landing, I think the Fed waited too long to start tightening. But that's the story on stagflation. If you enjoyed seeing this uh, explanation, you can watch my other ones. And also you may want to subscribe to my, oops, my newsletter. I put out a monthly newsletter on the economy, a 60 second update. And you can subscribe to the newsletter by texting the word econ to 42828. Just enter those numbers as if it's a phone number, 42828. Send the word econ and you'll get my newsletter. Thanks for watching.